All right, everyone. So this is the first episode of Overcome. And I think Overcome is a word that we can apply in many situations. But this guy, I met him uh, over a year ago. And um, he overcome so many obstacles to accomplish the things that he had accomplished uh, in, in his athlete career. Uh, I'm just happy to have him as my first guest on the on this show, uh, Nick Del Popolo. I'll be right back with you to talk about judo. All right, okay. Nick. Uh, thanks, thanks a lot for for um, taking the time on this uh, Sunday. You just uh, have, have some session of workout. Uh, I see that you're still on your gi, so thanks a yep. lot for taking the time to oh, talk to me. us. Yeah, it's absolutely fantastic. I mean, you are uh, a great example of overcoming a lot of adversity, your personal life, your experience uh, growing up, uh, coming mm -hmm. from Montenegro to U.S. is an amazing story. If you don't know uh, about Nick's, uh, you can read about. Um, now, on, on this topic, overcome, one of the things that... Uh, you changed throughout the years was your division in judo and I know that one of the things that made you change was the struggle uh, to be on the 73 kilos I think uh, right. in the past right and I I bet you that just to make the weight just to make the weight throughout all these competitions was the first struggle that you have to overcome right uh, 100% uh, yeah so I mean it must be a, a really good relief but let's go back to to the prep for your first Olympic and how how was that mental game to get ready in, in shape and focus on on the weight but also on your technique on your strength tell me a little yeah. bit more about that well, that one was a little strange for me because A, it was my first one, and B, I made the everyone else that made that team. There were f five members on that year's team from USA, from Team USA. Everyone else made the team in like like February. They knew they would, they they knew they had made it points wise, and I I did I had way more than enough points. But another guy from the United States had a lot of points too. We both qualified, so I had to fight off for my Olympic spot three months before that doesn't seem like a long time it seems like enough time to train but i had to peak for that and peak for the olympics so it was it was hard it, w it was difficult and um especially because i hadn't beaten this guy i hadn't had much success with this individual up until <clears throat> that day mm -hmm. um especially in the country he always beat me fortunately for me i, I won that day and then <clears throat> I, I basically had really two months to really get into super good shape or, or optimal shape because you still need two weeks to basically come down from that peak that you had. You're still training, but you can't train as hard because you train so hard for the Olympic trials, right? Mm -hmm. So two weeks there was basically rehabbing my mind, my body, my spirit, because it, it took a lot out of me to make that team. I kind of part of me still can't believe I made that one. And um, th then two weeks at the end, you don't really train all that hard because you're peaking for the Olympics. So mm -hmm. there is a month gone like that. So you really have two months. That two months was spent a lot on game plan because the, the Olympics is a smaller tournament relative to most judo tournaments. There's roughly, especially at the middleweight category, which is the deepest and most uh, contested, there's only 28, 32 guys. And of those guys, really 20 of them 18 20 of them are very strong you know mm -hmm. so you 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 can do your homework you can i was training specifically did for you keep, did you keep the your weight uh, throughout this whole process or you were going up and down i was all 78 the time? I, then i was always 78 i was always 78 kilos i always i always would come down you know before the event but i was oh i was walking around 78 all the time 78 79 77 so when you I only drop to 73 to make the weight for the for the tournament that's it and then you go um, up again there were times in training especially when i had good tournaments where <laughs> doy, where uh i was like pretty close a week out but i couldn't hold the weight i i lose a lot of water when i work out and i drink a lot of water throughout the day literally like two gallons of fluid if not more so that's a lot right there and that's what i used to to rely on in order to make weight was that water drop and I, I would diet too and feel good but the water drop was how i used to cut a lot of the weight 
and, and now you are prepping for the Olympics, which will be next year, and you are going to 82 or 83 division. 80, 80, 81 kilos. 81 kilos. Yeah, 81 kilos. So yeah. now you definitely don't worry about weight uh, because you probably are working with more than 80 right now. I'm that... usual. Right now I'm coming off this injury, but if I wasn't, I would say easy. I'd be 83, 84, but like body fat percentage would be right where it needs to be at around 10, 11%, you know, just so mm -hmm. I can have energy to, you need to lift, run and do judo, you know, yep. two or three times a day. So that's, that's demanding, especially at pushing, I'm almost 32 now. So I'm not complaining about it, but I need a lot of calories still, you know, a lot of good calories. So usually 84 kilos, I'd say, but low, pretty low body fat percentage, but enough to keep, uh, going to all day when you were on tour last year and actually you were on tour i think in january as well in, in yep. actually in february because i remember i was competing at the uh lone star and on the same weekend yep. you were i think in paris uh um, yes and uh after your tournament i was reading the comments and there was a comment uh i think it was on facebook or something or someone some of your uh, fans that wrote and they were emphasizing how you probably were one of the oldest guys in your division. Uh, how did you feel that? Did you feel your strength was good uh, comparing to what you were in the first Olympics or even on the second one? Do you, um, feel, do you feel that uh, the experience is paying off? Uh, the, here, it's it's weird. For me, it's um, it really comes down to, uh, you know, the... the uh, the month before the tournament, right? If I have a good month, if I'm healthy, like I will admit this, there are times I go to tournaments when I probably shouldn't go where I'm not like physically ready or like healthy, you know? Mm -hmm. Or But I, I go just because you need these points and you have to win these matches to go to the Olympics. So you got to go and you already pay for the tr Okay, you got to go, right? But when I have my better tournaments and I feel like regardless of what age I'm at, it's because the, first, the, the whole month out that camp, so to speak, is strong in diet and training and and when I, I i don't get injured yeah i have a few bumps and bruises but i i know when i'm like pushing too hard so i, I but i will admit when i when you're younger you're more up for whatever comes your way right, right. you don't know what's around you know what's behind so you are you are actually it. training way more smart right now than you were in the oh, past for, for sure like 100 percent and i still train like a bonehead to some degree but relative to what i was when i was 23 19 i would train like close to five or six hours a day with with, with no rhyme or reason there was like i lift this weight before training i go for a run after training mm -hmm. i it was just like i want to be the best so bad and that and you know people would slow me down and say dude what are you doing you have like no direction it's great that you're so enthusiastic but you have like no direction in your training right yeah now it's much harder but or excuse me now it's much smarter but there are times i can push harder i just can't push too hard that often you know i can push and I hard and i think that in paris you went over time uh in one of yeah. the matches right how did you feel in yeah. that one uh every overtime match on the world tour is tough but uh that one not particularly well <laughs> uh <laughs> I don't know. I just. The, but, but the question is more like: Do you feel that your the gas was there that no. you were prepared? Yeah, 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 that's the thing. Like, I if I even when I'm like not in great shape, I have enough game and enough judo to hang with anybody. That's the thing. I have mm -hmm. enough experience, so it's like right. there's something to be said for that. Now, if the guys just blew me out, just blew me out all the time, I would I would say okay, I I probably shouldn't do this anymore. But there's like matches and there's tournaments where I have good feelings and good emotions and good moments you know like mm -hmm. i oh, i can still do this and just training where i i know it's training but you still compete well with the best guys and i'm still relatively new to this higher category and i've been injured and i am really optimistic for the new matchups at the higher category because the guys they seen me but they haven't felt my game you know so it's different yeah yeah well um uh... <laughs> I, as you know, and I just would like to uh, thank you very much for all the support you you, you gave it to me over the the past weeks uh, since my injury. You know, um, talking to me and and motivating me to to stay positive on this uh, road to recover. There is any in your career? I know that you have some some uh, uh, injuries here and there, but there was any time in your career that you had an injury that made you to completely stop uh for a long period of time that you could not train yeah um i was 15 and i had like 
ACL, LCL, and meniscus surgery. I had three surgeries in three weeks. I completely blew my knee out wrestling. My foot got caught between the mats, and the guy shot a low single, and my knee just went brink. Um, oh, wow. But, like, and that sucked, and that, you know, there was a lot of, like, you know, why me, a lot of pain, physical, mental, a lot of mental pain, a lot of, like, yeah. can I come back from this, a lot of doubt. But then, you know, even then, I, 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 I found that, like, I did a lot of, like, review like match study you know and i or i did a lot of like um not necessarily match study but i would watch like guys with really good techniques mm -hmm. just do the technique over yeah. and i mean almost to vomit you know my mom would be like turn something else on like i get you enthusiasm, <laughs> but like god you've watched that video literally a hundred times then i'm like i know i'm i'm mastering it up here you know yeah. so there's always time and like there's always like even when you're hurt or when you know you're down there's still time to make some sort of progress, right? Some sort of progress. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, and, and you're going to be surprised how much that learning through osmosis is going to pay off. You know? Yeah. Yeah, because I think that the physical condition will come pretty fast. As, as soon as For your sure. body starts to, to rehabilitate and you start training again, everything is going to come back. Yes. As Especially you said, it's more... it's more it for a long right. period of time. Right. Know? I think, as you said, it's more mental, uh, uh, psychological... Uh, impact for someone that's been training for a long time uh, now the other question is when you came back did you hesitate to do some movements because sure. I, I was actually talking to ken from east side dojo the uh, dojo the other day uh -huh. he had a knee surgery as well back in the day he told me mm -hmm. and he said that when he came back he changed his instance he was righty he changed mm -hmm. to lefty because wow. now he was not using that uh, left leg as the main right. leg to hold his weight because he right. didn't feel he could use that leg, right? So he changed completely his instance from right to left. That's, which, crazy. Which, That's I thought, crazy. which I thought that was pretty interesting that he did That's that because wild. it yeah. makes sense, right? right? Because you don't feel uh, the, the same uh, safety to, to use that leg again. Right. Well, it's, I mean, they literally, we literally call it the supporting leg, you know, mm -hmm. you, all you're, you're, you're supporting your weight, your opponent's weight while, um, you know, rotating and twisting and pivoting and hopping. So it's like, you're literally doing everything your doctor is telling you not to do on that bad leg. So right. I can understand like switching sides, but in the same token, it's like, as long, I think if you have really good rehab and you, you know, real, you can, my, my supporting leg is actually stronger after my knee surgery, which is crazy. But I can go did, lower. Did you, did you come back straight away to that supporting leg? You didn't yeah. hesitate some movements? No, I will admit like there was some, like, uh, there was some hesitation in regards to like hopping or changing levels for sure. Like getting low, you know what I mean? That was a, and pivoting a lot of my toes. That was a kind of a mental check for mental head check. But, uh, in, in, in regards to, uh, you know, going right back into training, I rehab so hard for four months that I, I recovered from all these surgeries. And are you still there? Yeah. In, yeah. Um, in, in four months, you know, and I, I rehab, but I did a lot. I rehabbed literally every day, like a madman. Mm -hmm. And I was in, I was in like, I was still so young. I was 16 when I got the surgery. So, yeah. but changing instance is also another challenge, right? Because you spend a whole, your whole, week live doing with one one side then you have to change yeah. every single movement to the other side that's crazy as well i thought that's, it was pretty crazy that's wild but you know you still have a, actually you probably have a better understanding of the game because you have both sides like i show techniques both sides and i can i can fight right i can do it but am i a, am i the same threat am i as comfortable no like no, obviously not but like the fact that he made that choice that takes a, a lot of like tenacity man just yeah. like yeah i'm not it's going to take more than that, you know, like mm -hmm. that's totally changes game. That's crazy. But as you said, you can do both sides. So in a sure. fight, if you see an opportunity, you're going to go to the other side as well. I can. It's more like for me, it's more like having moves to both sides, not necessarily standing both sides. Does that make sense? Yes. I find that like when I'm in, my, when I'm in a right stance, I'm only dangerous in for like two or three doors that are open, right? Against whatever side of the opponent. Right. Mm -hmm. But, my movement is not nearly what it is with my left foot forward and my defense is really poor. Right. So it's, you know, there's not a standing ball size, not crazy about that personally. 
And when you when you were doing wrestling, were you shooting also on your on your left thing, or are you shooting I, more on your life? Yeah, I shot. Let's see. I actually shot righty. <laughs> so that's different. Yeah. yeah because you, I, so you change your instance. Yeah, but then it was weird. I could wrestling was weird. I could do moves to both sides way easier than judo because it wasn't as. It's not that it's as not as dynamic. It's just that. Again, lifting someone on a supporting leg and rotating your whole body. It, 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 it requires more coordination, for more sure. balance. There's a lot yes. of things involved. It's, it's not only going straight. like uh, Exactly. Wrestling. Like wrestling, you can dart. You can dart forward and change that angle. Mm -hmm. But I could do that relative circle single, swing single, blast double, both sides. No, kind of no problem. But judo is way... Uh, it's, it's way more complex. And, and, yes. and, and, and uh, what I, I always tell also... Uh, to to the, my professors is that I feel like the learning curve to judo sometimes is is even harder than jujitsu because uh, sometimes to master one throw it takes years to master For sure. one throw. For sure, years and years and years refining that throw. It's it's weird because I I take it for granted because I've done it for almost 27 years now, you know, and but then when I teach people of all different shapes and sizes and levels it's just like you have to you have to really put yourself in their shoes they don't know how to move how to grab the gi necessarily how to you know create pressure or how to get underneath someone so you have to like really think about where to begin you know the basics and that's the same in anything the basics will get you really really far you know yeah yeah so and and one thing that i learned a lot from you is really the uh, the fundamentals are very important. Right. How you position yourself, how you would do the entrance and the twist, yep. everything plays together. And right. to me, I think uh, I still uh, uh, trying to to work on that. And I noticed that it really takes time because, for example, this injury was exactly trying to do a tayatoshi, right? So I was right. positioning myself to a tayatoshi. I was with my foot in the front. And while I was starting to move my left leg to, to the back to twist, and then my opponent, Kuzushi, in, in the opposite direction. So my, my left leg had to reposition itself, yep. but then I was out of balance and my foot twisted, right? Well, yep, you just said it. See, it's like that's where the learning curve can be harder than jiu-jitsu or wrestling. You have to keep balance, and there's all these moving pieces and mechanics, and you have to keep your balance probably while suspending your opponent's balance on yours you know what yeah. i mean so it's it's not that it's harder than jiu-jitsu or more difficult than wrestling it's just different in that regard yeah i agree no i agree uh and there is in and people are asking me are you going to go back right away to compete i said well i i my plan is to first as soon as the doctor gives me the green light to um, start working out. I'm gonna work out, strength my muscle, get back in Have shape, you. you know, yeah. uh, and and feel safe uh, to right. go get back to the mats first. Right. Uh, so I, I think that that's that's the the, the whole plan. But it, it, it has to. Be. That's, that's. I mean, you asked me about myself, and like, yeah, I was younger, and it was only took four months, but I literally it was all about muscle building, not even muscle building, like you know, stability balance all these getting it stronger than what it, what it was you know which is like and it's your foot so it's crazy you know it's there's only so much you can do with your, yes. your foot you know yeah <laughs> yeah that's right that's right well what, what about the plans uh from now on where, where are you going uh from now on do you have a a, a pan uh a yep. pan uh, 8 a.m com, coming up and so, uh congratulations for making the team to go thank you that's pretty awesome so when is that that's in october October 20th, 21st, 22nd. So it's almost in a month. So yeah, basically today's my last day of being a bum. Tomorrow I start training like full time again. Like I, I'm, I'm like talking to Sensei Tommy. Like he's, I can see him text messaging me during this video chat. Like here's my plan. This is what we're going to do. So like, yeah, we have a plan and approach because I got my injection. I feel pretty good. I'm ready to go. Uh, yeah, it's, but a lot of it's going to be the, the big plan is I can't change too much about my game right now, yeah. especially coming off the shelf. The big plan is body being healthy, uh, getting as fit as I possibly can. Good conditioning. Being, yeah. Yes, that's and that and conditioning the whole body, not just your lungs mm -hmm. or your mind, even your toes and your you know your just things to keep you out there for. I have to. Tommy was like, you basically got to plan for five wars. 
and it's in, within the Pan Am Union. They're winnable matches. It's kind of for me. It's kind of a game changer. Do you, you, know, have, do you already know how many matches you might have? Uh, four or five. Four or five. Okay. Yeah. If I want a medal, if I want a medal, I gotta I gotta win at least four matches. And that leads you to the uh, uh, top three to get a medal. Uh, yeah, and there's two third places, right? Okay. And that's what you need, right? You need a medal to continue to make the, uh, points for the team. Is that? Uh, it would really help. A top five would help a lot. A medal would really help. A medal is like ideal, you know? Yeah, That'd and this is going to be in South America? Uh, Pan Am Union. So Canada, us, Mexico, Central America, all of Central America, Cuba, all of South America. Going to Brazil uh, also? Brazil, Ecuador, all, all of South America. Okay, awesome. but the the, so, phys- the 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 location of the tournament, where is it? Guadalajara, Mexico. Okay. Oh, so it's very close by. Yeah, that's why I'm kind of optimistic, you know. Yeah. Well, man, this is gonna be a great opportunity. Uh, I'm just glad that USA Judo uh, Judo is uh, is open up for this, and the Me Judo too. community is making this happen. It was kind of sad that we had to cancel the uh, presidential uh, uh, the invitational in November. Yeah. That, 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 yeah. but it is what it is uh, in, in, it gives me also hope that next year I can compete there uh, I, yep. think, I think if I'm looking one year ahead uh, I can definitely be on that competition you know for sure and like I said you're you, you can look at like you can also you can find anything if you're looking for it hard enough obviously but like you can look and you can find so many athletes and so many grapplers that came back better from injuries you know so It's like it's devastating. It's demoralizing, and I, dude, I, I, I felt so bad when I saw that. I was like, oh my god. And I, you know what? In my mind too, I kind of, I, I don't mean to be smiling, but I, in my mind, I, I, was, I said, I wonder if he was doing tayo or he fell or lost his balance. And unfortunately, yeah. he did. But like, but that's, but you know what though? Like, it's not um, your attitude. It's awesome. nobody's fault. You know, that's the thing. Right. As soon as happened, uh, my opponent was all worried. I said, "No, it's not your fault. It was not my fault. It was just a freaking accident." You know, it, 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 it really was just, is. it's just a moment. It's just I was right. actually watching the other day how uh, Kobe Bryant got his Achilles completely ruptured, right. and so, I was uh, he, during the interview. He said. The, the the journalist asked, "What did you do to do to cause this problem?" He said, "I did the same thing that I do every day. Nothing. There was nothing yep. different. It was just a freaking accident." Just exactly, and that's all there is to it. And like once you, I think a big thing in like when those things happen to people, whether it's an athlete or an individual that's not an athlete, it's just you have. To, it is what it is. It's happened. It's an accident, you know. And it's it's not really about what has happened. It's what's going to happen now, you know. And that's and it's so like ugh, tiresome to hear that, but yeah. like. It, it, it it's reality. But it's true. You know? It is true. It is true. Yeah. Uh, it is uh, completely true. Now, before you go to 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 the pan, you still have one month prepping. Uh, right. I I notice uh, on on your Instagram and Facebook that you are still offering privates, right? So I'm gonna put right. here uh, all the information uh, on the screen so people can contact you for that. You okay. still it's still open for that, right? For sure. I I, I just got done teaching one. So. Okay. Yeah, for and sure. I for all of you that are listening to this, I highly recommend if you are in the DFW era to schedule some time with Nick because it it is a, a game changing for uh, someone standing up uh, in jiu-jitsu Mainly, we always uh, start on our knees, but when we go to the tournament, we go, we have to stand up. So right. simple things, simple simple adjustments to your game uh, can really uh, benefit. And and Nick knows jiu-jitsu, and Nick knows wrestling, and Nick knows judo. So he he knows also how to counter a lot of the attacks that the people will do against you. I I personally felt but that my jiu-jitsu game changed completely after I started judo because judo gave Good. me gave me more balance even on the ground. You you feel right. more stable even on the ground. Right, right. That's why it's it, it's literally it's it's funny when you hear BJJ practitioners and judoka practitioners or judo practitioners arguing and it's like guys. We're literally on the same team. Yeah, it's like, complimentary. It's, it's totally it, complimentary. Uh, yes. The other thing that judo also helped me was uh, grip fight, because right. judo- judokas they 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 hate someone grabbing their their gi, so they will fight for that for that uh, uh, gi. And, and it's very very important with jujitsu. Sometimes you don't you take for granted someone grab your collar. He's like, well, leave it there. I'm gonna do something big else. Deal. Right? right? Yeah. 
but with judo yeah. it's different yeah it's... you're gonna you're, you're gonna pay you know if someone it, that's like it's like hand fighting in wrestling or you know it would be like fighting for position in guard in, in, in jiu-jitsu you know it's mm -hmm. it's so important to get an advantage uh, you know an advantage we're, we're wearing them for a reason you know? yeah that's Well, Nick, uh, I'm not going to take more of your time. I could spend like hours talking to you. He is always a fantastic uh, experience. So thank you very much. Uh, have a, a great Sunday. Go go eat. Go uh, put your meal and make sure that you stay hydrated. And let's uh, uh, hope for a medal uh, next month uh, on the pan. It will be great if you can bring a medal and, and help your qualification. And also... Uh, just another uh, important information on this poster that I'm going to put here on the screen. Nick also has uh, information for donations. So if you are interested in, in sponsoring or helping out Nick, just make sure to, to contact him directly uh, through this uh, banner that uh, you have on the screen right now. Nick, right. thank you very much, my friend. Thank you very much, Yuri. Thanks for having me. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. All See right, my friend. Take have care. Bye-bye.